Hello, my name is Toby from Art Master Studio and welcome back to part two of how to paint a French Napoleonic Chasseur à Cheval of the Guard. Uh, this time I'm focusing on highlighting. Last time we undercoated all the areas we needed to. I'm going to start by highlighting the horse flesh. Uh, I'm going to be using Vallejo Leather Belt as the first highlight. This is a Panzer Aces colour. Uh, if you want a full rundown of all of the colours used for undercoating and highlighting, uh, they will be listed in the video description. So if you're unsure what I used for the undercoat, just look there. So, let's squeeze some of this into our palette. Add a small drop of water from our brush. Give it a good mix. This is our knackered brush. Never use a good brush to mix. It's just not a good idea. It will tire the brush out far too quickly. And brushes aren't cheap. Good brushes anyway. I, uh, for this uh, highlighting stage, I'm using a Red Sable Kalinsky 2-0. Slightly thinner than the brush we used to undercoat. Alright, so, now we're just going to put this on, block it on over all of the raised areas, leaving the darker undercoat colour in the creases. Now you can leave as much or as little as you like. Whatever your preferable taste is. I don't like to leave too much on the first highlight. because really this is the main colour of the horse that we're putting on now. The uh, base coat is just where the uh, shadows are going to be. In between muscles, etc. So just take your time, try and be as neat as possible uh, because now we have actually undercoated the whole model. You want to be a bit more careful about getting paint on areas that it shouldn't be. But again, don't worry too much. Um, we haven't highlighted all the areas yet. So as you can see I've got some paint on the straps there but that's perfectly fine. Because the straps aren't finished yet. Be sure to uh, watch this video in HD for the best viewing experience. And you should be able to pick out all of the details that you wouldn't have normally be able to see in our previous how to paint videos. Try to keep the paint as smooth as possible. If it's too thick then you'll get some lumps and bumps where they shouldn't really be. Now 
Now I'm highlighting all the way underneath the horse this time. Uh, the second and third highlight, probably not going to do so much highlighting underneath the horse because that's not really where the light is going to be hitting. But it's important to highlight it on the first highlight, otherwise it's just going to be a solid block of colour under there. And it will look slightly odd. So you can get a little bit creative with the horse muscles. It's not important to follow them 100% anatomically correct. Uh, wh whatever really looks good is good enough. Um, some people get caught up too much on uh, how the how it would actually look in real life um, but to be honest it's not actually real life it's a piece of art and you know if you want it to have a few extra creases here and there then just do it and you know if you think it looks good then just go with it and I think that's perfectly fine same goes for anything uh, cloth or wood or leather so now we're going to highlight the face I'm going to be using Flesh Base, this is a Vallejo Panzer Aces colour. Now this is actually a new paint so I need to give it a good shake. It's important to make sure all of your paints are well mixed before you squeeze them out. Otherwise they will come out watery and probably separated. Uh, so you not really get any colour, it will just be kind of the watery substance that mixes with the paint itself. So be careful about how you go about that. So I'm actually going to switch to a slightly smaller brush for this face. Here we go, as you can see this is a bit more fine, it's actually quite a small face, uh, so you have to be quite careful of how you go about it. Faces are really the focal point of any model. More often than not, it's going to be the first thing that people look at when they look at your models. It's the thing that really brings a figure to life is having a good face. So if you can get eyelids on that's brilliant, if not don't worry about it too much, it's not the end of the world. Again cover most of the base coat that we used I've left the bottom lip as it is for now, we'll probably paint that a different colour later on. Now we're going to highlight the green. So I'm going to swivel my palette back round. This is a green that I mixed up in the first video, so if you want to go back and look at that you can. Uh, but I'll briefly explain it. I used um, Vallejo Black Green and I added some black to it just to darken it down. Now for the first highlight, I'm going to take Vallejo Flat Green. Now this is obviously far too light just to put straight over it. So I'm going to mix some of this with the mixture that I made before. Now I'm just going to judge it by eye whether it's light enough or too light. I think that looks pretty good though. Add a bit more water to that. A 
feel free to add a like or a comment, I really do appreciate those and I try to respond to as many comments as I can and questions um, but if you really want to ask a question um, or if I if I if you do ask a question in the comments but I don't get around to it for some time then feel free to send us an actual email to our email address which is artmasterstudio at hotmail.co.uk I'm probably more likely to respond quicker uh, because I check my emails daily. Okay, so I've gone back to my 2-0 highlighting brush for this. Just picking out the raised areas of the cloth, leaving the any creases in the darker green, don't forget the collar and the little bit of green on the barrel sash. Now here you can see I've gone over the green slightly with the orange on the blanket roll at the back here so I can just touch that up by painting over that. Now this is quite a subtle highlight but um, I'm going to have several layers so you will start to see uh, the highlights the more we go on. You don't have to be this subtle if you don't want to. Uh, don't forget the plume. Now we're going to highlight the red. Now I'm just going to use Vallejo Red for this. Surprisingly there are currently two colours in the Vallejo range, both called red from the translation. Um, but they've got a different number here. This is 033. The other red that I have is 029 and that's slightly, slightly lighter. So this is going to be on the cuff and the plume, or the tip of the plume. And then the tongue on the hat. You can see some subtle creases here and there cast on. Try and keep to that if you can but like I said before if you just want to be creative then that's perfectly fine as well. Put as many or as little lines on as you like. This is a, actually a really nice uniform, it's probably one of my favourite uniforms from the Napoleonic Wars. Alright, so that's the red highlighted. Now we're going to highlight the trousers. Now I used um, Vallejo Light Mud, which I've got squeezed out already in my palette, this colour here. And I'm going to add some Vallejo Ivory to lighten that. This will give a nice off-white colour to the trousers. Add some water. Because the paint 
it's probably dried out slightly from earlier. that's nice nice bit of contrast there not too much not too little Alright, so that's that done. Now we're going to highlight the white. Now, simply, we're just going to do the same as what we just did, but with the light grey that we used before. This time, instead of adding ivory to it, I'm going to add off-white. This is ever so slightly more of a crisp white than the ivory. Again, a little bit of water with that. Think that we've base coated in the light grey, we're just going to give that a quick highlight. If you're having trouble keeping a point to your brush uh, after you've washed it, uh, my advice is just to give it a little bit of a lick into a point, really. Just put it between your lips, give it a twizzle, and it should come out at a nice, nice point ready for painting. Be careful not to get any saliva on it though because that will mix with your paint and it will make it slightly stringy. I know that sounds gross but it you know you just gotta be careful that you know you don't do that because it, it can ruin something that you're doing. Okay, so I've got a little bit overzealous there, got a little bit of paint where it shouldn't be. Just got some orange left over from earlier. Gonna paint over that. And again, anything that's left can just be touched up later. Same on the wood there. Right, so finally I think the wood and the orange going to highlight the wood with Vallejo Flat Brown. This is kind of a nice red brown. And we're just going to go for a, a green, wood grain effect. With thin lines on the wood. some hair, highlight for the hair there. And then for the orange, we're going to use orange brown. This is a Vallejo model colour. Okay, so I've put some of that on, 
but I'm not convinced that that's got enough contrast to it. So before I go ahead and do the whole thing, I'm just going to take some of my final highlight. This is going to be light orange. This is quite a bit lighter than the colour we're using. So we're going to mix some of this with the colour that I've just put on. Just to give it a bit more contrast to the colour underneath. And that way the third highlight won't be such an extreme contrast to the second highlight. So it's important to make sure if you spot something like that you uh, rectify it straight away rather than just thinking oh, I'll just carry on, I've started now. Because if something just doesn't look right to you then it's probably not going to look right to somebody else. And you want your models to look the best that they can so it's worth putting in a little bit of extra effort just to get it looking right if you have any comments or suggestions on how to improve this video please let me know I'm always uh, open to your feedback and I do appreciate the thought that you put into it okay so finally I think we're just going to give the black a quick highlight before we move on to the next video. This is going to be a layer of black grey and we're going to highlight all the black areas with this so uh, the straps on the horse, the horse legs and the boots on the trooper Before we end the video, um, I'd like to mention that uh, we are a full-time UK-based painting service. So uh, if you have anything you want us to paint or you just want to get a quote on something uh, or just some advice, just send us an email at artmasterstudio at hotmail.co.uk and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. I've been painting myself uh, for uh, quite a long time now, uh, since I was five is when I started uh, helping my parents out because they start, started as a small painting business themselves and then I wanted to help them out so they taught me and ever since then I've just been keeping at it and getting better and better. I'm 23 now, going to be 24 in January. So it's you know it's worth saying that if you're new to painting, you're not going to get amazingly good at painting overnight. It does take time, but keep at it. And if you're passionate enough about it, then you know you will get pretty pretty darn good. I mean, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. So. You know, don't worry if you're struggling right now because you know I believe that if anyone puts their mind to it they can get good at painting. Okay so that's that. Okay so I think that will be all for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. 
and I'll see you in part 3. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.